social entrepreneurship is um, not quite new, but it's not really been well entrenched. And so you encounter all sorts of problems. And uh, usually, usually what we do uh, is disruptive, you know. But the issue of poverty is very complex. It isn't really as simple as providing uh, incomes. Um, poverty really is a deprivation of choice across multiple uh, aspects of life. In the U.S., 82% of agriculture gets processed. In India, only 6% of agriculture gets processed. I mean, think about that, just 6% of the food that, that's grown on farms in India make it to the cities in a quality enough state to be processed. The main concern is really distributive justice. Are the burdens and, you know, and the benefits of uh, expanded economic transactions that involve low-income consumers, is, is, it, is this being shared with uh, the poor? The spark went along the lines of, well, you know, if anyone can access their email from anywhere in the world, you just log in and log out of someone's computer. Why can't you do the same with a phone? And just felt so passionate and so strong about it. Um, you know, we went to the company I was working for, I was in a full-time employed job at that time. I went to them with the idea. They weren't too interested because, you know, it was bottom of the pyramid, low income. And I really felt that this was a really fantastic solution um, and a solution that met a great social need as well. And with that, you know, I spoke through with my wife for a few days and we thought about this and we just quit job and decided this is the thing to do. So we just set up my Vertu and off we went. <laughs> Could we take this technology to market in the U.S. and maybe make more money or grow the organization faster? And it's a dilemma for us because I don't know that we would have the same social impact if we did that. And so it's always a tension. You know, in investors want, well, a lot of investors, as soon as you say developing world, they hit the road, just run away. So it's, it's always a challenge for us to balance the social impact with our desire to, to build a successful organization. I love the way that business schools are really becoming huge proponents of social entrepreneurship. Um, I think that it's just so important whether you're coming from a business perspective um, or you're coming from a nonprofit perspective is to think about long-term sustainability. You know, think about how your organization is going to be sustained over the long run um, financially, but also how you know really you really do think about um, the ethical implications of that and always stay true to your mission. Probably the biggest uh, obstacle has been that all of us have been volunteering for the last two and a half years or so, and we don't have any money for organizational development. And it hasn't been difficult to fundraise for the actual solar suitcase supplies. Many people feel very um, drawn into the mission and really want to help clinics, and so they realize for a certain amount of money they're going to be providing a suitcase that's going to provide light and electricity and help hundreds and hundreds of families every year. So that part hasn't been difficult, but finding funders that actually want to help us to uh, pay some of the people who've been volunteering so we can have an ongoing staff and build capacity has been very difficult. And so some of the very talented people who have volunteered to work with us are needing to get jobs and move on. It's a challenging field. Uh, you have to have quite a bit of perseverance uh, and not lose heart because the success will come really as a result of persistent failure. It, it, the same way that you, you come up with a killer product from you know, just trying and trying and trying until you, know, you get it right. Um, I think social entrepreneurship will typically have the same kind of evolution. So you have to have a certain hard-headedness. 